Welcome to the Season Butcher. I'm Charlie Anderson, and today let's talk bacon. Now, my family is big on bacon, but what I'm not big on, the sticker price. When you go to that store and you plan on picking up a pack of bacon, boom, there's the sticker shock. I personally am sick of paying the sticker shock. So, what I'm going to show you today is how to make wild game bacon. And today we're going to make venison bacon. It's actually a family favorite. You want something a little meatier, a little healthier, venison bacon is the way to go. You may think, wow, venison bacon. It's actually not hard work. It actually takes minimal equipment. And I'll show you that today, step by step, how you can make affordable, cost-effective venison bacon right in your own home. You don't have to pay the big sticker shot from the big box store. So, when you start making your venison bacon, there's going to be a few items that you're going to need. And really, it's not a lot of items. First thing you're going to need is a grinder. It doesn't matter what size grinder, as long as you have a grinder. The other couple items is I have a couple black bowls because I split my seasoning. 50% in one bowl, 50 in the other. And I'll show you along the way why we do that. Then you're going to need some cheap little foily pans. These are very easy, they're very cheap. You don't have to worry about washing them after you're done. I just simply throw them away. You can wash them if you want. And then some wax paper. I'll show you how we do this, but we'll put wax paper in here, then we press our meat into it so it comes back out so it goes on the smoker. Then all I got is a nice little metal bowl and a whisk. This is what I use with the water, and I put my pink gear in it to whisk it all together. And I'll show you how that goes also and a simple little measuring cup. So then you can measure out how much water goes in your meat. So after we got all the equipment rounded up that we needed to make our venison bacon, the first thing that we start with is we take our pork. Now today, believe it or not, I am just went to the quick supermarket. It's a pork picnic shoulder roast. That's what they had, that's what was cheapest, that's what I got. So what you're gonna do, this had a bone in it. So I cut that pork off the bone and I cubed it up in two inch by two inch chunks so it can fit through our grinder. Same thing with your venison. I have venison left over from last year. Mine's already pre-chunked, ready to go, but if yours isn't, cut that up into chunks that can fit through your grinder. Now we're going to grind that through a 12.5 millimeter grinder plate. What that does is brings it a little bigger chunks. So as you can see, we just got done doing our coarse grind. One thing I want to touch on a little bit is when you coarse grind, it's okay if your meat is a little crystally and frozen yet. The grinder seems to like it, it keeps it cooler, and the inside of your grinder doesn't gum up with fat. So a little tip here, it's okay if your meat is cool or a little slightly crystally frozen yet. Uh, another little trick is you can actually pull this piece off of the grinder right here to throw it. Put it in the freezer for a few minutes before you start, just so it's nice and cool. Seems like you have a better product that comes out. So now that we just got done with our coarse grind, we ground 50% venison, 50% pork to make our venison bacon. So what we're going to do next is we're going to mix in our seasonings. Now I mixed up two cups of water with our pink here, which that half of that will be going in right away to start with. And then I separated my seasoning in two little bowls. So then I'm going to put half in with half the water to start with and start mixing. Because I'm going to mix this by hand. I do this, put half in, mix it first. And then I bring in the rest of it and put in the other half of the seasoning into the water. So then I make sure that every bit of my meat is covered, seasoned, and has the pink here. So all I'm doing, I mixed it up once already. I'm putting in the other half of the seasoning for the venison bacon, and I'm putting in the other half of cure. Then I'm going to mix this all up, and when it's good and mixed up, then I'm going to run this through our grinder. We're going to be running it through a 4.5 millimeter finished grind. 
And what happens, putting the seasoning in between here, in between your coarse ground and your fine ground, when you grind it one more time, it actually helps mixing it, mixing the seasoning right in with your meat. So we just got done doing our final grind. The seasonings are all mixed in, everything's grind through the 4.5 millimeter plate. What you're going to do then to make venison bacon is you get some wax paper and you get these nice little cake pans that are about an inch and a half deep. And to make your loaf of venison bacon is you press your venison bacon right into the pan. So all you're going to do is take a good handful here, press it down in, and you want to try to keep it about the same thickness on each pan so that it smokes the same or cooks the same whether you do it, put it in a smoker or in the oven. It gets done at the same time. The wax paper is just going to help it when you flip these over upside down to take them out of the pan so it doesn't stick. That's the purpose of the wax paper. So now that I got my meat, my venison bacon, pressed into the pan with the wax paper, what we're going to do is we're going to put it in the refrigerator and we're going to let it sit for at least 24 hours. Now me, we're making this on a Friday. I'm not going to get to it until a Sunday to be able to smoke it. The reason why it's nice to let your meat sit for a period of time if you can is the meat actually absorbs the seasoning and it actually makes it a more flavorful product. If you ever had some meat and you said it, ah, the flavor just wasn't strong enough or it just didn't seem very flavorful or bland, it sometimes could be that you just rushed into it and you just made your meat, smoked it, made it all in the same day. Us, we actually do that with just about 90% of our products is we make it on one day, let it rest, sit in the fridge for one day and then finish it up on the next. That way the meat has time to actually absorb the seasoning so then the meat becomes very more flavorful. So we're going to catch you later. We're going to finish patting these all in. We're going to put them in the refrigerator and I'll catch you when we start smoking. Hey everybody, welcome back. Today is smoke day. So we had our meat resting in the fridge now for the last day and a half. So now we're going to prepare it for the smoker. So what you're going to do to make life easy for you is you take your smoker rack. You're going to set it right on top of your cake pan with your meat in it. And all you're going to do is flip it upside down. Boom. Easy. Pull it off. Little wax paper. Look at that. There you go. That's a beautiful venison bacon loaf. Now you're ready to go to the smoker. Now we're going to take this to the smoker and put it in there and you're going to put in a couple meat probes. Like I got three loaves of venison bacon going on today. So I'm going to use three meat probes, one in each one. Because it's crucial when you smoke this we're going to bring it to 135 degrees. So you want each loaf to reach 135 degrees. Now this is bacon. It doesn't mean that it's done. So after we take this out of the smoker, when it reaches 135 degrees and cool it, to slice it, you still have to bring it up to 155 degrees to eat it. So just don't think because it reaches 135, you're going to take a bite because it's not done. This is made to be sliced and cooked right then and there so it's not dried out. So follow us step by step here and we're going to finish the rest of the process. Hey everybody, now that our meat reached 135 degrees, this is one of the most important steps so you don't lose that venison bacon you got all your time into. When it reaches 135, you're going to go put that in your refrigerator and let that cool down overnight. What that does 
is it firms it up nice. Then it's prepared to head to your meat slicer or if you're going to cut it by hand. Myself, I got a cheap little meat slicer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that on there and I'm going to slice that to the desired thickness that you like. I got one buddy that thicks it, likes a little thicker and he makes almost like a ham slice out of it. Myself, I like it a little thinner. So what you're going to do is make sure that cools down overnight, cut that to the desired thickness you want, and then you bring that into your pan and make sure you cook that. It's just like regular bacon. You have to cook that to 155 degrees in your styling. You will not find a better BLT sandwich until you have venison bacon. So if you like what you see, come and subscribe, check out our channel, and give us a few comments if you want.